Probably one of the greatest additions to Path of Exile in the entire history of the game was loot filters. Now, if you want a taste of how the game used to be, uh, try running any high tier content whatsoever without a loot filter and let me know if you can see literally anything on your screen besides items. Now, recently there was a huge update that you may not have even noticed that made it so that any item that is hidden by your filter is not actually rendered by the game. This is an absolutely insane performance boost for all parts of the game, but is particularly useful in high investment maps where insane amounts of items typically drop. So no matter what level of player you are, being able to properly set up and maintain a loot filter is of even more importance than ever. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that. Hey guys, remember only a small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel, so make sure you do that so these videos will show right up in your feed, and if you're enjoying the content, make sure to like the video. Now, when it comes to loot filters, there is basically endless customization. I just wanted to make a short video talking about how to actually create them using a website called filterblade.xyz and giving you some basics if you are a very new player and wondering what all of this hype is about changing the way that items look on the ground. So the first thing that you should know is that in your options menu, is in the escape menu, there's going to be this tab called game, and you'll see this thing that says list of item filters. Now you're actually going to have to go get one of these, which we'll talk about here in a moment, but what these are is they are different ways for you to filter the items that you see on the ground. You can see that with my loot filter, it shows up like this. However, if you turn the loot filter off completely, it has this very plain look to it. These can be insanely helpful because some loot filters can actually completely remove some items from your filter completely. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to become significantly more efficient because you're just not getting this visual overload of all of these items that don't matter. Now, what you can do with a loot filter is it makes it so that it shows you what items are actually worth picking up. They've got varying degrees of like intensity of color. Like if you want a very good item, it would be something like this color. This is an exalted orb. Or if you want like a medium tier item showing up with a little bit darker background. There's a whole bunch of different things and you can edit these in pretty much any way that you can imagine. But you'll see that when we turn this back off, it looks a lot less interesting, right? you wouldn't be able to tell that this exalted orb here is worth a ton of money, right? If you have the loot filter and you swap it to something a little bit better, you're like, oh yeah, that looks actually looks pretty important. So that is the idea. Now, when it comes to getting a loot filter, I have personally felt that the filterblade.xyz website, which has been around forever at this point, is one of the best tools. We're gonna swap over, jump into that right now. So as I said, this is filterblade.xyz. If I remember, I will put a link down in the description to this. This is made by Never dev a member of the community that's been around forever absolutely excellent guy he just does all of this just to help people out it's just a hobby for him so make sure to support him if you have used this website before now when it comes to actually creating a filter there's a couple different things that you should be thinking about the first thing is going to be you can choose between softcore hardcore and the stable these don't really matter that much choose whatever it is that you are currently doing I'm on softcore which I think most of you are as well and then you're going to be talking about strictness now as you go through the game and become a better player and make it further into the campaign into the end game you are going to want to regularly change this a little bit i would say if you're in a league start scenario typically semi strict is what's going to be best it's going to give you kind of a good balance of items that you'll see you'll see some rares that are worthwhile but you're not going to see everything that's completely garbage right and then as you move into maps i would say you'd probably want to move up towards strict and then when you move into very high tier maps and you've got some currency and you've got some items already set like say you're in the realm of spending like an exalt or so on items you You'd probably want to move up to very strict and then eventually uber strict when you are at the very very peak we are going to go with very strict right now because i'm going to be making this how i would for my own purposes right now we're pretty far into the progression this league we're in high tier maps high tier currency farming all that kind of stuff now you can choose the style that you like here i personally use velvet just because i like purples and pinks you can get a quick idea of what the different ones look like choose whichever one you like most now there are going to be presets and you can like completely reset the filter We'll talk more about those in a little bit. But what I want to talk about is actually the personal customization of the filter. Now, I suggest that you do this once, you do it as well as you possibly can, and then you can tweak it as time goes on. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move through here and decide, do I really want to see insert item here. So like things like vendor recipes, right? There are a ton of vendor recipes that are worthwhile. To me, 
I pretty much don't do any of these. These are more useful for things like maybe Solo Cell Found or something like that. So if you're a player that plays in Solo Cell Found or in the very, very early stages of the league, you can set all of these specifically to which ones you want to do. For me personally, I don't do any chance bases. I don't do any vendor recipes for the most part. Um, sometimes I'll pick up chromatic orb recipes very, very early on. So you can change that if you like. As I said, I don't do any chancing bases, but when it comes to currency, I do actually want Want very specific currency to show up. So what I suggest that you do is go into each of these tabs and you're going to see this button that says auto sort. What this is going to do is it's going to take the current prices of whatever you see on the market and adjust them. Because if you see here, you'll see there's like a variety of different orbs and things that are in these lists, right? Like Blessing of Chayula is down here and all of this. If you hit this auto sort, You'll notice that it swaps in around by cost. You'll see that there's a few more things in this tier and things have kind of moved around. I suggest that you auto sort on pretty much everything and then do this at least once a week. Now, there's a bunch of different ones that you can do this on. I would go through each and every one of them and just make sure to hit auto sort. There is one specific auto sort that I would recommend that you take a little bit closer look at and that's going to be unique items. In unique items, you've got two choices under the configuration here. You can either go off of highest price or lowest price. Now you'll notice here that says lowest price, valuable uniques might have a low highlight, and highest price, worthless uniques might have a good highlight. I personally feel the one that bothers me the least is going to be based on lowest price. What this does is it means that if you drop, say, a leather belt unique, right? That will make it so that all leather belts will show up as orange, just in case they can be something good, instead of, you know, a worthless unique. Say if it drops like a random leather belt, it might show us something really good and then you like, you know, debate yourself into being upset because it's not actually a good item. I do base off of lowest prices, what I personally like to do. Now you can modify all of these if you want to, I don't recommend that you do it, and then you'll hit auto sort. That will move them to only really show you the items that are actually worth money. And then you keep on going through all of here, auto sort all the way down through the list and once you've got everything that you want auto sorted a lot of these aren't going to allow you to auto sort as you can see here there's just so few items or they're just specifically set up in a way that the the amounts of money that each of them cost don't really change too frequently but do go in and make sure that you really do get everything because if you miss anything at all Prophecies are being removed from the game apparently by the way. You might get a little bit confused later on. So once you've done all that, you can go in here and change like maybe some crafting bases that you're looking for or league specific items like ritual base types or high strength, things like this that you may want to know a little bit more about. Replica uniques and all that kind of stuff. This is for more higher end players who are really looking to do a lot more specific stuff. And there's a bunch of other stuff beyond that, but we don't really need to worry too much about that. Now jump into the simulate tab and you can go into here and see what it's actually gonna look like when you generate some loot. So in general, you're gonna notice that pretty much everything that's in here uh, isn't showing and that's good because what this means is that normally without a loot filter, you would be seeing all of these items and you'd have to like pick and choose through a million items to be able to see what's going on. And instead you only see the things that actually matter to you because you've personalized your filter. So that is something that's going to save you a ton of time. Now, one thing I didn't go over here is going to be these presets. I waited a moment to do these because what this is gonna be is that if you are wanting like a leveling preset, so if you're searching for like a leveling filter and maybe you wanted to level as an archer, you could add in the leveling archer section. This will show you like bows as you're leveling up and get you some more interesting items. You can also add in sound packs. Now, I personally, and I think that you should as well use Mathel Vulgarity, but just because it's the best out of all of them. But I guess for the average person who doesn't want an athletic Australian cursing at them constantly, you could probably just use Shaper Sounds. This is going to have the Shaper's voice actor saying all of the specific lines. Now, once you've added Mathel Vulgarity to your, uh, to your loadout, because obviously that's the one you're gonna choose, right? You can hit apply and then we can go into the final stages here. Now, what you can do from here is you can save these in a couple different ways. Now, if you remember in game, there were some like highlighted options in the list of filters. That is actually logging in with Path of Exile and saving them to your Path of Exile account. I personally save everything locally just because I don't like dealing with the logging in and logging out of Path of Exile. It makes some tools work kind of weird when I'm trying to stream. So I keep these saved locally. And you'll see that I have Velvet very strict here. So what you can do if you're coming back to modify your filter a little bit, you run out of a save and load and you're just gonna hit load. It'll pop in all of your settings. You can tweak anything that you need to. And then you can come over to the download tab, name the filter, whatever you want and hit download. Now it's gonna give you a little option here that says your filter contains supported custom alert sounds. If you have already downloaded all of these, 
these and already included them in the folder, you, ju you can just hit cancel here and it will download your new filter. Now what you're going to do with this filter is you're going to go into your options, you're going to go into game and you're going to hit this button right here that says click to open your filter file folder. This will open the exact folder that you need to be able to drag that file that you just downloaded into. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into your list of filters and you've got the option of none, default, and maybe you have some other ones sitting in there that you've used before. If you don't see your new filter, that means that you need to switch to none and then it should show up in the list. Hit your filter, reload it if you feel necessary, and make sure that you hit this little button that says hide filtered ground items. Because what this does, if you didn't notice yet, we will take this immortal call, we'll drop it on the ground, and you'll notice that nothing happened, right? There's no item that actually dropped on the ground. However, it is there. And if we go into our options here and we turn this off, you will notice that if we drop this immortal call on the ground, suddenly it's got an animation, it's got a texture. So what they've done is they've made it so that anything that is hidden by your filter is just completely removed from loading. You can imagine if you're in a very, very high tier map and you've got like 5,000 items being rendered on your screen at any given time, maybe even more than that, honestly, sometimes. It's a ton of stuff for your computer to do. So this just completely stops all of the rendering of those items, removes them from the ground, and you can see it will clear up a lot of stuff from your screen. I've heard of some people getting like 20 to 30 more FPS in high tier delirium maps and like huge juicy like five orb delirium maps with a bunch of sextants and things like that. I've heard of them getting like 20 to 30 more FPS or even more if you're on like a lower powered machine. So definitely something you wanna look into. And that is gonna be it for the video. Now, I hope that you spend a little bit of time and make sure that you make the perfect loot filter for your play style, whatever that might be. And then you can go back in and tweak it. Uh, Filterblade.xyz has been absolutely wonderful. I have personally used it pretty much every single league for longer than I can remember at this point. So maybe Make sure that you stop wasting all of that time looking through a bajillion items and bring the strictness of that filter up. If you find yourself not picking up nine tenths of the stuff that's on your screen, you probably need a stricter filter. So remember guys, if you want to come hang out with your boy, make sure to follow me over at twitch.tv slash big ducks. I stream five days a week, Monday through Friday for the most part. I miss some days just because I have another job besides this, but come hang out with your boy about 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. And then beyond that, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this. Like the video if you enjoyed it and stay safe out there in rain class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.